Okay, now that I've set it to reset with this crossfade on both sides, let me just check that ending now. Then it restarts. Very good. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, this was taking way too long. I just have a lot of extra frames here I don't need. Keep a few of them. So here we go. So it starts this way and then it will crossfade. So once you have your finished animation, same thing, just reviewing it. You make sure you save it. This is eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. That means you can go up to as many as, I think, 50 frames, and it will still process easily as a GIF. I'm at 42 frames for my entire animation, which is quite a bit going from a nine frame storyboard. So then I go to file and I don't do, do save as a GIF because if I do that, it will just save whatever image is on right now as a, a, a single GIF image with 256 colors. Instead, in order to embed the animation script into it, I have to go to export and say save for web legacy, basically saving it to play on internet browsers in HTML. I can use these little minus signs to make sure it fits on so I can see all the edges. I can click on the play to make sure it previews. And now the only difference between playing it here and playing it in Photoshop is it's limited to this color palette across all frames. So you can see the graininess that happens, but it actually can help smooth some edges. Remember GIF animations are, are meant to be kind of analog and a little glitchy though there are digital artists that definitely make a fine art of making them smooth and beautiful as well. So then I hit, I hit save, I'm gonna save it to downloads. Same way I did before, I'm gonna replace the existing one that's saved in the same place with the same name. Because saving it here keeps the file name but just puts GIF at the end. And then instead of it popping up like that, I'm going to edit and you can always Refine your submissions in Canvas by using those three edit dots. But when you post resubmissions, I never want you to delete what came before, right? So I'm going to call this resubmission. And then we can see where I improved it. Drag it in. will take a little bit of time. It's a lot of layers, even at just 150 pixels per inch. And then I'm going to shrink it to fit. So there it is. Okay, now I need the refined storyboard. I go to my stage file, which I have saved, right? It's already saved. Now, I'm going to show you how, how you can do it for all of you, though it doesn't quite make as much sense for mine. It makes a little bit more work for me, but this way it will work for all of your animations no matter what you did. And it will show you some more skills with the timeline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my last frame in my timeline. I'm just going to click on that frame that automatically will turn on the layers associated with that frame. I'm going to be careful not to turn on other layers, right? 
And what I'm going to do is now click on the, the timeline options. And instead of make frames from layers, which we have done before, I am going to now flatten frames into layers. So I have 42 frames making this animation. When I click on flatten frames into layers, it will add 42 layers into my layers. And each of those will be one full animation frame as its own layer. And then underneath where it says frame, frame one is here, you will have your layers, <laughs> layer one on down. So then I need to delete my old layers, even my white blank one. So now I just have in my layers frame ones through 42. Once I have that, I can delete out or not delete, but drag all the, the timeline frames to the trash by holding down shift, selecting them all, dragging them to the trash can, and then closing out the timeline under a window. Why did I do that? Well, now, no matter how you animated your image, those animations, those frames were on your timeline. Now, each of those frames are like a deck of cards. This is a flipped book that we've now made of your animation, right? So we have a deck of all the images, even my cross-faded images are all different layers. In order to make our refined storyboard of the nine best frames of your animation, you first want to figure out what your middle frame is. So I'm going to go back to my storyboard sketch and I'm going to look for a good candidate for the middle and it's when the explosion first kind of happens. So I think when the ears pop off is a good middle frame for me. I'm going to mark that red so I know where the middle of my animation is. Then I am going to use my rulers. If your rulers aren't showing, hit Command R. And I'm going to drag, using the Move tool, click on the ruler, drag a guide to each side of my, my canvas. I'm going to show you how to do layout in Photoshop. The only way to, to perfectly center something in a document in Photoshop is to grow the canvas size around it. So now I'm going to take this this image size, which is currently 8 by 8 by 150, I'm going to now grow around it a canvas that is 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. It will give me a big checkerboard. And because I put the guides there, it will show me those, those guides for how things line up. canvas size 30 inches wide and 40 inches tall I can pick my first frame my first frame is going to go in the upper corner here but I don't want all the frames to be touching I want them to be separated by a border and I want that border to be an equal border and it's hard to see that with the checkerboard right so what I'm going to do is make a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer with white at 100%, and I'm going to move it behind everything. Because my, my animation has a white background, to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to fill it instead with 50% gray, and then just change it to white at the end. OK, now it's basically like I have a gray tablecloth on a table, and I have this stack of cards right in the middle. In order to deal out the cards perfectly spaced, I need to turn on under the view options. I have to show my grid. And this will give you inch based grid marks, right? And so what I want to do is move a half inch from each side. Actually, let's do a full inch, a full inch from each side. So a full inch would be from 16 to 15, right? So at that 15 grid mark, I, I bring a new guide. At the 10 grid mark, I bring a new guide. 
at the 20, I bring a new guide. So it's going to be four squares. It depends on how much you're zoomed in. So one inch from each side on 30 by 40 by at uh, 150 pixels per inch. Okay, so now I've got placements for all of my decks of cards. Then I can turn off the grid, and you can toggle that off with command apostrophe. And I want to find my first frame. That's my first frame. And I'm going to use my move tool. I'm going to turn off auto select. I'm going to drag that and it will lock into that corner. So now I've got my first and my middle. And now I get to pick my others. So what's my next frame going to be? Is it that one? No. Is it that one? Maybe, but that one looks awkward. I look at my sketch. I need it to, to be, you know, turning into the cat. So maybe this one. It's like, what parts of the flip book do you want to show? I like that one to end with. So maybe that's the best way to tell that story. Next, what comes right before the explosion? That's such a fun one. Probably this one. Oops. And then the explosion happens. And then what happens after the explosion? Actually, not a lot happens after the explosion, just the icicles. So, yeah, I think what I might do is move the middle frame, because you can always change your mind, to here. So I can keep that fun cat frame there. Yeah, boom. And now I get to the last. And I'm going to start with this one. So you just choose what's, what's going to show up. Probably, probably this. And then my final frame. And you can tinker with this until you're happy with how the story is told. In your refined storyboard. And I keep changing my mind, thinking about like how best to tell this story in these frames. And I think that works pretty well. Now I can turn my background to white. Or I can duplicate it and fill that with white. But what I have is now perfectly spaced layout within Photoshop which is very handy. Okay, now I'm going to save this as a new file. So save as, 
And I'm going to call.